Antolite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right, take two. So this is Jiggy's canonical adventure. What manner of absolute nonsense is this? So my my good friend of the the channel here, Jiggy Wiggy, um, from the Faithless Brewing Discord and Nibmizit fame, put together this absolutely bonkers deck, um, probably on the inspiration of the Faithless Brewing Community League, in which we were incentivized to build around some wacky, wacky cards. So uh, one of the cores of this deck is Kinnon, Bonder Prodigy. Um, so this is green and a blue. This card is from Ikoria. It's a 2-2. And it says, whenever you tap a non-land permanent for mana, add one mana of any type that permanent produced. So if we use something like Mishra, or not, uh, Mox Amber for mana, we're going to get two of that mana instead. And if we use something like Mox Tantalite, another one of the interesting additions to the deck for mana, uh, then we're going to get two mana of any color that that produced. Um, so this is going to give us a ton of mana. But even things like Arkham's Astrolabe and Gilded Goose are going to produce extra mana for us. So we have, I think, 16 cards down here that all produce uh, quite, quite large amounts of mana in tandem once we have Kinnon. So what are we going to do with that? Well, Jiggy's decided to go down the road of an Urza Lord High Artificer uh, artifact shell, which makes sense because Mox Amber was already something that was reasonable to play in that deck with Emery and Urza. This deck also has Royal Scions, Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, and Karn. Karn hilariously does not allow your Mox Amber to produce mana, which is sad. Um, but uh, Karn is going to give us access to a wonderful sideboard package. So generally speaking, we're just like a team or mid-range deck. But what I would say about this is, like the Urza deck is a mid-range control deck versus being a pure control deck in the style of Bant, uh, the Bant control decks that are popular without Stoneforge Mystic and Modern, those are a very pure form of playing a control deck, uh, as are the sort of blue uh, color piles that are um, popping up now. It's like four color. Uh, either they'll be whiteless or redless. Um, those are very much more controlling than this. They're playing uh, counter magic and stack interaction in the form of things like Cryptic Command, Arkham's Ast or, um, Archmage's Charm, and other things. This deck is playing to the board hard. Um, the Urza deck already does that reasonably well, and this deck seems to have eschewed all main deck interaction for just more permanence. To that end, we've all gone all the way up to playing Ancient Stirrings. Uh, three copies of that in the seven, or in the 80 here. Uh, so we've got a very, very large Karn Wish board, and then we've got really two sideboard cards. We've got Damic Sphere, four copies of that. Uh, we can bring in three if we want Karn to be able to wish for one, but obviously we're going to be able to try to dodge Big Mana, Tron, and Storm with that. And Galvanic Blast is a little piece, or a little bit of interaction for post-board games. We can board out whatever is the least good in that matchup. So my good friend Jiggy Wiggy has been close to 5-0 a couple times with this. It is a very interesting play pattern to it. It has a shockingly low, low number of lands, which is kind of neat. Welcome back to the stream. Uh, it's Pharaoh, right? You like Pharaoh? So Jiggy has had some reasonable success and is actually joining us here in the chat today. So we've got the one and only Jiggy Wiggy hanging out with us, as well as my perpetual stream buddy, Roy the Boy, and uh, relative newcomer, Pharaoh. Had a wonderful uh, influx of new people, and I just want to thank everyone so much who's helped make that happen. We've got a bunch of raids from Blitz, MTG, Ashiok, um, just just some good people. So thank you so much, guys, for for helping this community grow. Oh, we're against uh, Bruno Monero again. I can't remember what they were on last league. If I wanted to, I could go find out game history uh, it's on the bottom right yeah, that one I think this was one of the Jund decks it was this is one of the Jund decks this is the first Jund deck we beat okay we should have a decent go against Jund here though we are on the we're on the play here and we have Tantalite Astrolabe no, sorry, we're in the draw here. But Tantalite, Astrolabe, one land. Uh, if we get Thoughtseize here, we're going to be in trouble. We have no... Two. Easy keep, really? You think so? What if they take my Astrolabe? Like, their clock is reasonable. I think, I think we do have to keep it. Like, I, I do... 
I think we have to. It's not that we have to keep it. It's just going to six against Jund, and then they're gonna it like thought sees you. I don't know if you ever heard of us. I haven't played a song of creation deck, but I know a lot of them. Yeah, I'm gonna keep this because my usual um, wisdom against Jund is to, or Jund and other black discard based decks is to keep the maximum number of cards that you feel like you reasonably can. I would be happier with a hand that was land heavy and uh, threat light. Obviously, beggar not chooser. This looks great for us because they went for green red. Oh, they're not playing Jun anymore. Well, okay. Kinnon is a pretty good draw there, so I'm gonna suspend this Tantalite. Um, I'd like to get red or green here, um, so that if I draw Ren and Six, I'll be able to cast it, um, no matter what other land I have. But I don't. So we'll just get a forest. Yikes. Jiggy, it already uh, appears that the card we want instead of Mox Tantalite is more land. Grove of the Burn Willows. What? What? I don't know what's happening, but I'm excited. Let's hit a land. Come on. Land. Yeah, buddy! Alright. Always lucky, my friends. Always lucky, lucky, lucky. Lightning bolt. This is part of the problem with this hand, too, is like, even even with the Kinnon, we're not going anywhere fast. But what? Oh, it's Red Green Eldrazi. Okay, this, this all makes sense now. Yep, yep, perfect. Perfect call. A half a second after it was basically revealed to us, Roy. I was really excited. I thought there was going to be, like, something weird in their deck that, like, Grove of the Burn Willows was going to make reasonable. Oh, well. Land? Uh, well, I'll take it. So good, Lantern. Okay, so next turn we have four mana. Play Urza, play Trinket Mage, play Zero Drop. All right. Seems all right. Cavern of Souls. Yikes. And the reason we're not going to play Uro next turn uh, is we want to play Urza plus something, I'm pretty sure, and we won't have the colors to play Uro. I mean, may maybe we will, but it seems unlikely. Cast Eldrazi Obligator. Okay. When you cast this spell, you may pay one in a colorless, gain control of target creature, untap that creature. So they get to, they would get a mana rebate. Oh, no, they just have to target. It's just an obligatory target. Okay. So we're going to take five here, plus two from Chandra. Yikes. Oh, six. No, wait, did we already take the two? We already took the two from genre. All right. Cast. Okay, Storm is on two. Uh, yeah, it's an okay draw. Oops. Uzza. Lord High Artificer. Yeah. Okay, so I can filter a mana through the Astrolabe to play the other Astrolabe, but that means I don't get to play the Trinket Mage, and I think I'd rather play the Trinket Mage than anything else. Although it means I have to tap my Construct, which I'm not excited about. Maybe, all right, we're going to use Urza to do... We're going to use Urza to play this Astrolabe. Maybe we pick up the land, and then we get to do more. Nope. All right. <sighs> Got to survive this one. We're at eight, and they have one card in hand. We might be okay. If they have another Obligator, we are super screwed. All 
Like, we had a nice explosive turn there, but they have some good hedges against us. Birds of Paradise. Not good a hedge against us. All right, all right, all right. Let's top deck a Karn. We've got tons of mana. Should be able to lock them out. No attack. Oh, that is phenomenal. They cast the bird? Oh, I guess they get to attack for one with it with Noble Hierarch. Yikes. Yeah, Tantalite is really, really spectacularly, amazingly poor. I... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I was ready for it to be this bad. Oh, we have a main deck Pithing Needle, right? That's a banger. Yeah, we do. I could just get the Shadow Spear though, and then the Trinket Mage, the next Trinket Mage, get the Pithing Needle. Okay. So, how much mana do I actually have? So, I have a further one, two, three, four here. Um, Shadow Spear rebates one. So play Shadow Spear is basically zero, and then equip it is two. So then we have two remaining. So we cannot play and equip. But what we can do is play and equip the Shadow Spear on the Construct and swing at Chandra. And they either have to trade a bunch of creatures or lose the Chandra. We're going to gain a bunch of life. So I think that's where I'm at. And then we can also play Uro, I think. No, we're not going to be able to do it. But I think I'm happy with this. Shadow Spear. Crap. Yeah, we're not going to be play, able to play anything else this turn. Is that a concession? Do we get the concession lockout? Nope. Whoa. Okay, there we go. All right. So attack Chandra for eight. Go to 16. Seems reasonable. We have Trigget Mage to block next turn. Can they even block enough here? One, two, three, four, five, six. No. I mean, they, they could they could lose their entire board and make Chandra go to two. I probably should have used my last two mana there to equip the Shadow Spear to Urza. Not particularly excited about blocking here. Okay, that's good for us to see. This is less good. Smasher? Smasher's fine. Smasher's fine. Smasher's totally fine, because they can basically only swing with Smasher. Or this as a 6-6? Six, six? Yep. Yeah. What are you going to do? Race me with that? Someone tell Brian M we found the deck for Shadow Spear. This is... This is the Shadow Spear deck. Screw, screw Hammer Time. This is the true Shadow Spear deck. So we do want a Trinket Mage pre-combat here. Um, we're going to Uro post-combat. It's probably just grabbing me an Astrolabe. Just to pump my Construct more. So I don't need to Pithing Needle anymore. I could get Engineer Explosives for one. But that's going to kill way too much of our stuff. Well, two Astrolabes. But I think just getting the um, Arkham's Astrolabe is the best here. So, um, tap one astrolabe to filter in the other. One astrolabe washes the other. And then we've got blue filtering into the astrolabe for green here with Uro. Uh, I think play Uro pre combat in case we draw another artifact that I want to. Oh, I don't need to filter here. Okay. In case I draw another artifact here. Uro is just going to get eaten by the scavenging use, but I think we're okay with that. Kinnon is... Our mana just went completely nuts for the next turn. Yeah, that's fine. You don't like my Smasher is fine line? Well, this is, this is what I describe this deck as, right? Like, it's super, super nuts at playing to the board. Um, friend? Okay, you'll, they'll learn. They'll learn. 
I don't know if our opponent has kept up with the new English, but this deals excess damage. Did you hear me? Excess. Oh, they do get to swell their scoos. So they do. They are up to 13 power on the battlefield right now, so we don't really want to get too cocky, but I'm pretty cocky. If they draw an obligator, we're dead. And that was true before, so... If this is obligator, we're, we're, we're toast. Yep. Uh, I don't know if we're actually dead, but it's going to be... Oh, no, the construct is going to die? So actually, we're okay. Is it going to die? I think it's just going to die, right? They have zero? Oh, no, the spear keeps it alive. That's actually really good for us. Because that means I get my giant construct back. So this is this is totally fine. Yeah. Well, it's a 2-2. Two -two. Because they control the Construct, and the Construct gets plus one, plus one on Lifelink and Trample. So this is actually fine. I mean, it's going to hurt a little bit, but we go Block Obligator there for free, Block the Scoos. We're going to let this stuff hit us. We'll go to eight. They have zero cards in hand, so uh, there's no sort of threat of crackback. So this is fine. So we're good. Yeah. The obligator line does not work out as well for them as as I thought, or possibly as well as they thought, too. And then this turn, we can spin Urza, like, a stupid amount of times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six... Oh, we have another Tantalite coming. Don't forget Urian. Thank you. Uh, we're going to Urian at the end of this turn, I think. Um, we need eight mana for Urian. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that, that's Urian there. So I really actually can't do too many Urza spins. We're going to do one. Whee! Do, 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 do. We are gonna play that later. This turn, <laughs> three three cannons. Um, we can attack with Urza. We can attack with cannon, and we can attack with everything here because we're gonna flicker almost all of it. Okay. Opponent's not giving up. Well, they're made of Eldrazi. They're a spaghetti monster. What can you expect? M -m -m Mom spaghetti. Okay. Maybe they don't understand how much we're about to go so far over the top of them. So we're not going to be able to equip anything, but that's fine. So, um, so go blue, blue, white, white, blue. Sorry, blue, blue. Oh well, that's how that works apparently. Uriah, Sky Nomad. Plays of the board is such a sweet description of this deck. I think that's why I like it so much. Well, yeah, I mean, like, so imagine if our opponent's on Storm, right? Like, we're just completely dead to rights, right? And I'm not saying that's a particular flaw of this deck. Like, that is what you built. Um, but I think that changing what you built um, by the amount that it would take in order to make it resilient to something like Storm in game ones, like you have damping sphere out of the sideboard. I'm not saying you're completely dead to rights. I'm just saying like, generally speaking, you don't have a particularly good storm match, I assume, but yeah, see, there you go. So, but what I would say is that they've conceded, right? That's why I can't put my triggers in the stack. Like, like as I was saying the other day, like putting more interaction in the main deck of storm is not where you want to be. Right. Uh, so I think this is a galvanic blast in matchup. Um, 
any of our one of is not good here. Yeah, Soul Guide Lantern is not necessary. And then maybe one Tantalite. Engineering Explosives are fine. The Tantalites were actually fine in that game. Can we can we get a shout out to Mox Tantalite in that game? I think I'm going to cut a Kinnon and a Scions. Oh, maybe just two Scions. Scions is not great in this matchup. I know you said you really enjoyed it. In the, the, the league I played last night, and just generally speaking... I don't think Scions is that much of a banger, but. Well, the, the Tantalites are kind of like suspend, suspend three Glimmer Voids that are also artifacts. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, well, I just, I think this, this feels right. Ren and Six is going to be insane if we ever draw them because they have a lot of one toughness creatures. It looked like. The other option is to cut either some number of Kinnon or I don't know what else. Trinket Mage was kind of nuts there to tutor up the Shadow Sphere, though. That's 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 a Brian M classic in, as far as my experience has been when I played Brian M's um, Scion of Warza deck in Pioneer. That was. That was the sickness with Karnstrucks off of uh, Scion of Urza. Okay, this is a much, 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 much better opening hand, which means we we're probably going to lose, but that's, <laughs> that's what happens when you play the Magic the Gathering. Hand is gas only could possibly mean we're going to die. <laughs> what a beaut. There's a Noble Hierarch. Tasty, tasty Hierarch. All right. So I think I'm getting Forest into Goose, Suspend Tantalite, play Babel. I used to hate the Gilded Goose. It's really grown on me. Yonk, yonk. And then I think we're drawing the card at their end step. No, but I, if we're gonna do that, I'd rather see what they're drawing this turn. It's more relevant. I love Goose. I yeah, I used to not. I, I it's it's grown on me. They are drawing an Eldrazi Obligator. Good to know. They could just play it this turn, but we're gonna kill. Oh, don't thought not me. Please no. Stop it. No 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 no. Ah. See see. They're probably gonna take the Urza, but. Ah. Being on the draw. On the play, we would have killed their freaking, uh, like, Noble Hierarch. Like, man, sometimes. Sometimes magic's so tilting. Well, uh, we can play Kinnon. Then they're going to Obligator and hit us for seven. And then we Urza the turn after. Into maybe Uro. We'll see. <laughs> no bobble i like bobble i've always liked i like i don't like it in like every deck like i i love when people were like oh this is just card is ridiculous you could just play it in any deck and it's like you're playing a 56 card deck and it's like then how come nobody's doing that and the reason why is it doesn't work that way it's not that good uh the delay draw is very significant okay so we're taking six here but that's okay um just like Manamorphos, there, there's a cost to these cards. Um, and I think Modern is a great environment for those cards to be broken in because they're not broken in Legacy. They're fine, but... Oh, don't don't you thought not see me again. Come on. Come on. Don't. Don't you. Stop it. Seriously? Holy crap. Wow. Don't even go to the graveyard. So... Uro is going to be stranded. <sighs> and they have an obligator in their hand, so even if I do get to my Uro, it's going to get stolen away and kill me. On the plus side, it sounds like there's some sick thunder and lightning going on outside. If we win this, we are champs. I gotta tell you, I don't think we're going to be champs.
but we're gonna be in it. True Karn. Um, how much mana do I have next turn? More importantly, how much mana do I? Huh. So eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So even if they obligated me and hit me for everything that they were worth, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got bridge. Okay. Hey, uh, hey, Jiggy, how do you, how do you feel about me trying to win this game? Does that feel that feel good? What do you what do you think? I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna give it a try. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I feel like maybe we try to win. Hello. They can't attack me for two right now. With the noble hierarchs. One of the noble hierarchs. Start from them was so nuts. Yeah. Not only was it nuts, it was like very specifically hosing our hand nuts. Like, are they just playing out the obligator to have it? They could steal my cannon, but steal my cannon and attack me for four and kill my Karn. God bless it. Ah. <sighs> I mean, we, we, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, what? They screwed up. Nice. Weird. Weird choice. Well, that was yet again like the best possible top deck, I think. We can make a food. Yeah, we can make a food. Good. 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 Okay. Plus on nothing. Uh, can I play this Uro? One, two, three. Yeah, I can. Doesn't get me down cards in hand unless I hit a land, which is reasonably likely. So I, I think I'd rather play the Uro than make the food here. Well, she. All right, we're gonna be okay. I don't know that. I'm just making stuff up. But it looks pretty good. Smashy lad, thought not here. Help me out, Smashy boy. Hey, it's one smashing lad. What a smashy dresser! Wow. And now, even if they attack, I got the ears at a block. Friend, you you have zero cards in hand. There's no threat. Okay. I th I think we did it. Uh, by the way, Brian. I think or not, Brian Jiggy Wiggy. I think we I think we made it. Looks like we made it. Right. Yeah, Mox Amber is legendary, so we don't want that. Let's just get a scaling turn. Any order those. Uh, we'll up Karn again. Um, having one card in hand is not making any kind of difference right now, so uh, we can make the food at the end of their turn, so we're good here. Obligator again? Sure. It can steal my construct, attack for three, it can steal my Urza, and spin it? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. No, they can't spin it because they have to spend two more to get it. Okay. 
So you get to attack for three. I'm gonna attack my Karn. Uh, I can trade my Goose for this. I might, I might just do that. I have enough mana here, so. Um, Oh, this is a 3-6? And I have a 5-5? Five, five? Yeah, we good. There's zero cards in hand, again. Okay. Silly OP. You playing the wrong kind of Eldrazi. Your Eldrazi got some color mixed up in there. How you supposed to play Eldrazi? So, ah, oh yeah, we're getting my buddy Chris. Um, Chris is feeling good. He's been hitting the gym. He's doing real well. He's healthy. So we got one, two, three, four. Uh, we got a lot of mana. Let's see how big we can go. So two. Four, five, six. Sure. Hello. Okay. Um. Start picking out their creatures here, but I don't need to. So, I'm just gonna hang out. So if we ever need to, we can like strip down their board pretty hard. But I've got a six-six walking ballista, so it's gonna go up by three per turn. At least three per turn. Matter shaper. Sure. You have resolved an Eldrazi. Okay. Uh, I could pop out an Uro. Probably worth doing. It just stops me from cranking Ballista once, but it's going to gain me some life here, so I think it's probably worth doing. Just getting it into play in case for some reason the bridge goes down. Two cards and hands, not relevant really. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we can make a food and crank it twice. I think I have ten. Oh, we make a food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clunk. Y'all remember how this game started? I think I remember. I think I remember at some point in this game we were supposed to lose. Yeah, I, we can Uriah and blink, blink Bridge and attack. I'd kind of rather have... Um, like, I, I, there, we're definitely going to do that at some point, uh, Jiggy. But uh, not yet. Um, I've got a second Karn. Uh, like we're we're gonna do that in a turn or two. That is what I did with the last list, uh, at least in at least one game that I won. Um, we will eventually do that, but not yet, because our constructs are are not big enough, and they don't have trample. Chandra, okay. That can kill my Urza. Womp womp. Hopefully they kill my Kinnon. Oh, they go for exile? Weird. Lightning bolt. Wow. Nice flip. 
I mean, they kill my Karn. Kill my Emery. Good old threat assessment, right, Roy? Ballista is, in fact, an 8-8. About to become a ten ten. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'd rather pick off some of their three ones here. I think we're going to kill Chandra. Sorry, let me save targets. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that, that, that is an option you will have uh, when you get to a certain point in the game is you can... Um, uh, what are words? What are words? What are words? Um, Uh, you can take all the counters off your Ballista to shoot stuff, and then you can use Emery to replay it because it's more efficient. You get uh, one counter per every two mana that you have instead of one counter every four mana that you have. EE -E on zero. Yikes. That is really, really good. Okay. Well... <laughs> Not gonna kill my bridge, but I'm one off of cranking it again. Pick off their dudes now would be in my advice. Um Well, this is getting me my Shadow Spear. We, we have ways to get a rid of Bridge. Well, I know we do, I'm just saying. Oh, they can't pop their EE. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I have a Karn. All right, we're going to attack them and kill them next turn. Well, basically next turn. All right, cool. I, yeah, I scared me too. My bad, everybody. Forget. Don't forget. I'm an idiot. But I'm not an asshole. An asshole. Yo, 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 yo. Why would I be trying to piss you off? Okay. They have one, two, three, four, five green mana here. Wait, what? Why did it? Oh, because it's their turn. Ha! <sighs> Priority. Sometimes priority. I can crank my ballista three times here, so.
Yeah, I screwed up, so I'm going to lose an extra counter off my Ballista here. They have two more green mana. They want to ping themselves for it. They let one damage go through, though, which has made all of this much, much easier. So that's the last one. That's why we need Lattice. So we need a client that actually responds at a reasonable speed. Yeah, although we're now set up in such a way um, My turns are reasonably quick from here on out. Oh, they're actively trying to clock us a little bit? All right, that, that makes things a little bit easier. What the fuck? Why is that not the top ability? It's literally the top ability, all right. Okay, so you want to add exactly fours because it seems like Walking Blissa will just eat your mana if you do that. Okay, um, is attacking good enough yet? Probably. I don't know. Let's just shoot them all and, like, God sort them out, I guess. No, we're not blinking all the artifacts. That is not that is not anything that we're doing here. We're just blinking bridge. It's the only thing that matters. Okay. And then Bliss is on eight, so let's just kill Hierarch. Hierarch. Uh, thought not. So save target. Let's go one, two, three, four. Add a counter. One. That doesn't help. Okay. So we can kill Meta Reshaper and hope that that's good enough. I think we'll attack first. Go to combat. All in. Uh, I don't need to save my Urza. But I will. Okay. Thanks, Deck. All right, what do you got? 
I'm attacking with 14, 27, 33. Think we win? I don't know. Math is for blockers. Blocking my ballista leaves you super dead. They're already dead. They're already dead with the way they've blocked. I have a fourteen fourteen trample. <laughs> they keep trying to figure it out. I don't think that they can live here. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Nope. Not good enough. Not good enough, my friend. Still not good enough. Actually, is it? So they're going to take 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I won't be able to kill them right with, with the attack. They're going to go to one. Uh, if I unloaded the ballista, they will go to one here. So they're going to be at four, I believe. So technically, technically alive. Her, 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 they're still alive. We're out here. Here, here. They're still alive. Okay, one, two, three, four. Yeah, we got it. Well, they're still alive. We no 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 we no 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 no. Bonnard. Yeah, actually, I think we still had Ren and Six available. <laughs> Hand was Cindervine's Noble Hierarch Reality Smasher. Cindervine's? Cindervine's would have been really good against me, right? Yeah, but we hunkered down in the bunker, my friend. Just hunker in the bunker. Get that ensnaring bunker out. That killed Bridge. Yeah, it would have. That doesn't help them, though. Did, did you see my board? Did you see my board? The bridge was saving them for most of that game. The only problem was we couldn't... Our board wasn't big enough to alpha strike and kill them. So I had a previous game against humans where I ended up timing up, timing out. I lost game one to them. I won game two, but the game was like that, and then I timed out in game three. What... I feel like we need some way to get the bridge off the board when we want to, and then bring it back. How sweet is Trinket Mage plus Spear? It's good. It's fine. It's very good with Constructs. I think you only have room for that kind of cuteness in the 80 card version. I guess in that game, actually at a certain point, what we could have done is just animated the bridge with Karn and then shot it down with the Ballista. Because our board was just so much bigger than theirs, it just didn't matter. Uh, I think I'm going to keep this. Hydroid Crisis, maybe. Yeah? All right. Heart of the Cards, yeah. We need to draw a lot of action, but... All right, opponent, you ain't never seen anything like this before. Because we're in the dark, and because my hand is kind of weak, I'm going to play out uh, a little slow here. Well, this is why we did the thing that I just did. Immediately burn. Good lord. All right, well... Godspeed, little doodle. Should be interesting. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. I think we're going to get massacred. Heard you talking about getting rid of bridge. Just like there are game states where you want to be able to remove the bridge that you've put up. 
If you really wanted to get bridge, you just fetch Salvage Titan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That would do it, too. You can you sack the, the Salvage Titan. Mm. Uro does pull us through very nicely. So the play I have set up for myself is we're hoping that we... Maybe these hands are mulls. That's my instinct. I think this deck is very, very action hungry. Okay, they tapped out here. So my hope is that they blow enough spells on us that we get to land Kinnon with lifelink. Royal Silence on top. Yikes. Um, but that requires still another turn for us to get to Kinnon with lifelink. I have to take a damage to put the Scions down. It's probably still worth doing, but... Okay. Game two and three will be good. Well, we'll see. It'll certainly be better because we'll get to play Galvanic Blast. Scions, the only deck I've ever played Scions in where I liked it that much was Iceberg, and the reason I liked it in Iceberg was it turns your Ice Fangs into a clock. It was a one of, and you were a Mystic Sanctuary um, loop deck, and Mystic Sanctuary loop functions with Royal Silence. So, if you're trying to cryptic loop someone, uh, Royal Silence does the job, and is cheaper than than a Jace. Plus, you get to play it and Jace. Okay, so we just, we just died on turn three anyway, to burn. So, Turn three kill from burn. You you don't beat that with a lot of decks. Okay, blast in. That's it. Um, Kinnon out. Tantalite out. Who the hand was a keep then? You mean like in a yeah, like in a in a more reasonable matchup. Yeah, it might have been. I don't think I need Pithing Needle, so I think this is all I want to do. I mean, all I want to do is have some fun, but... All these burn decks telling me not to do all I want to do. Actually, Kinnon eats a burn spell. I bet there's something worse. Probably just another silence. Turn three kill for burn is exceptionally rare. Not when they play against me. It, it happens like every other game, it feels like. Yeah, the, the play to the board hands that are like crazy good out of this deck might be good enough against burn, but like... Ren in the Six is not a good card against Burn. Scions is not a good card against Burn. Karn's not a good card against Burn. Like, there's so many bad cards against Burn in this deck. It's not only really possible, but yikes! Oh, man. All right, that's way better. Um, we're sending... Oh. Probably Emery? Yeah, cause she's, she's just going to die. So this way we get a nice, clean early game. Hopefully find the Uro. I guess Emery into Uro would have been really nice, so maybe I shouldn't have shipped her so quickly. Maybe Emery on turn two was good enough because she would have milled us for for four. Yeah, I actually think maybe I made a mistake there and I was supposed to just ship the bobble. No, I, I don't know if that's a close call. I think it's 100% that I was supposed to ship the bobble there. But our opponent did take a mole this game, so hopefully their hand is not the nuts. And we have Galvanic Blast to so hopefully buy us a little bit of time. Seeing a Rift Bolt suspension on turn one is really good. Goose is great. Buy its stuff. Yuck, yuck, mother...
Or in the words of one of the greatest humans I know, Hyonk Hyonk and Goose. Hyonk Hyonk and Goose. And Goose. Be excited to play food tokens again in paper soon enough uh, because my Oko's got banned. So I have food tokens from when I played Oko and have not, not gotten much mileage. What? Not only do they not have the interaction there, but they decided to tell me they didn't have the interaction. That's such a strange play. I guess I should have end of turn Galvanic Blasted because they clearly telegraphed that they didn't have it. I don't know. Yeah. They could be ghosting. Yeah, but it still doesn't... They should still attack there, right? I don't think anyone's ghosting. Sick. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Billy Boyish. Uh, there's no one by the by the name of our opponent in the chat, so we're safe. There's always this person that's another Twitch viewer, another T viewer, another TTV viewer. They attack, you block, they cast a spell, and you blast in response. Yeah, I guess, but... But that doesn't put them in a much worse place than attacking, right? Because then they get a free point of damage if I don't block. Um, I don't think I blast here. I think I have to eat this. We don't have a Mox Tantalite coming in every game, so there's no Mox coming in this turn. Draw kind of sucks there. Do I not just play this Trinket Mage? Maybe I do. Just hope we hit mana next turn. That's not what I want. Can trick it for bobble. Yeah. I guess having the creature in play is better than not. I don't know. Yeah, I think the deck might want, want a Dark Steel Citadel because it's so land hungry. I don't think you want one in the sideboard, but I think you want one in the main deck. I was also trying to think of like if there was a um um what is it? What is it? Sun Droplet? I think that's the name of the card. Yeah, I was thinking if there was like a zero or one drop Sun Droplet. There is um, Sunbeam Spellbomb, which is kind of nuts. Uh, well, Sun Droplet you could have in the Karn board, but I, 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 it's really slow. Like, Burn's going to kill you before you get to that most of the time. But, but Sun Droplet, uh, as... But I think Sunbeam Spellbomb, though, maybe in the main deck. Just because the main main deck is so thick. Oops. <sighs> Ow. Jesus Christ. We need white? Why do we need white? Is Shadow Spear not enough? No, Shadow Spear's not enough. Like, look at our creatures. Like, what? 
Shadow Spear's so bad here. And, like, obviously we, we have not had, like, the greatest early game, but, like... No, we don't need white. We don't need white for Sun Mean Spell Bomb. We're good. It also cycles if you just draw it. It is also... What are you talking about? What do you... We have Arkham's Astrolabe. This is a board where Shadow Spear would have been helpful. Most of the time they had mana up to play Smash the Smithereens or other removal spell. So I, I don't know if that's true. So they got Rift Bolt on Suspend. <sighs> if I play Trinket Mage and get Mox Amber this turn, then the Kinnon next turn gets pretty nasty. I think that's what I'm going to do. They have one card in hand. They have one Rift Bolt on Suspend. So. They have two blockers. They are drawing a Bolt this turn. Did I, did I bobble them and was I not paying attention? Shit. Well, we just, this just means we have to block this, or they have to bolt one of my creatures. Okay, they're, they're killing Trinket Mage with the Rift Bolt. We're fine? I mean, I don't know if we're fine, but we're definitely not yet dead. I think they're cycling, yeah. So they've got one Bolt. We'll see what else they have. If they have another Bolt, it's bad for... Okay, so that's... that's actually, no, it could still be really bad. Yeah, that's Bolt on Goose. No, it's Bolt on me. All right. Well, if they give us the option, we're going to block here, I think. If we draw a land this turn, it's crazy. God bless it. Well, we get to go Kinnon into Uro. I just have to tap somewhat carefully. Hold on. It's the deck so far. It's, um, it's a time... We crushed Red Green Eldrazi, but that isn't really anything to write home about, I would say. Um, no offense to the Red Green Eldrazi lovers of the world. Oops. Fetch land. Another Mox Amber. I'll take it. Will I? Well, I will take it. I mean, I can't, can't do anything about it. So we're gonna try to not lose our kin in here. Cripes. Skewer. Shit. Yeah. Well, we finally get to kill this Swiss Spear, like 10 out of 10. Yeah, yeah, we get to kill the Swiss Spear. We're only taking two. This should we should have enough time to draw out of this because they flooded over a long game. There we go. That took for flipping ever. Wee! Right. Yikes. You know what? Don't even care anymore. Give me as many Mox Ambers as you want, deck. It's fine. It's all good. I feel some strange comfort playing Urian deck. Hard agree, by the way. I love having Urian in the back pocket. I love playing Urza mid-range decks, so, like, Urian was the perfect add for me. Like, even if people consistently prove that 60-card uh, Urza decks are better, I'm probably always going to be jamming the... Uh, 80 card Urza decks. Unless I'm playing um, Grixis. Well, that's an insane draw. I think we're just going to attack first. I don't really have any reason not to. Whee! Hey, look. It's the card they can never beat. Oh, my God. Didn't even have to tutor for it. Kinnan, Bonder Prodigy. Urza. 
<laughs> then we mox Amber. Then we mox Amber. Play Karn. Trigger. Wee. Keep that one. Tap it. Wee. Keep that one. Karn. <laughs> oh, really? That was the concession point? This is where you decided you were done? Really? Okay. Oh. I'll take it. I'll take it. Just, uh, okay. Yeah, knowing you'll never run out of cards is also something I'm pretty happy about. Okay, so that was an insane game. Probably not going to get to be that lucky in game three, but let's see if we can do it. So while, uh, Roy, uh, circling back to your point. So while I think that Shadow Spear would have been helpful on that board, it costs three mana to play and equip it, and we really never had that opening. So I don't... Okay, this is a banger. This is a very, very reasonable opening hand. So, Goblin Guide. Goblin Guide. Taylor. Womp womp. Okay. Miss Spear. <laughs> the deck is just beautiful. It's not it's not bad to look at. Unlike Niv Mizzet. Yeah, no, I yeah, I agree, Roy. But I'm just, I was just pointing out that like the shadow spear wasn't being helpful. It was an eyesore in the best ways. Deck is just elegant. I mean, I don't know about that. It's got a bunch of crazy one ofs. Whew. Is that going on my goose? Oh, it's going on my face. All right, because I'm not, I'm not blocking. All right, got it. Fair enough. All right, have at me. Man, this, this board is inconvenient. Okay. So am I going Vista for red into a row? Yeah, okay. So they're Best, yeah, 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 that's what we're gonna, uh, we'd have to shock for that. Maybe we will, though. Let's draw a different land, maybe? Untapped green? Okay, well. Yeah, we might as well play the goose, I guess. Better, better than not. So this goose can be potentially gain more than two life by being shocked in this turn. Rest in peace. Well, that's just rude. God, that's so rude. Ah. Okay. So... Yeah, I think we're going to take it. <sighs> so with Karn, Liquid Metal Coating, and a Galvanic Blast, or, or otherwise, we can remove this. Otherwise, it's going to be a minute. Um, So we play Kinnon for two mana, then we have access to one, two, three mana. 
but it doesn't really help us too much. Is this play Shadow Spear, equip and swing and gain? Like, so I can play Kinnon and get the Shadow Spear on it and gain... Gain three life. Uh, sorry, have a 3-3 three, three lifelink, but they're very likely to be able to just kill it. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. It's like that there's just no chance that that's worth doing. So I, I, I don't want to do that. Um, the low risk play is just like play Uro. The lowest risk play is like make food play Emery. They didn't rip. Well, exactly, but that's why they play that. Uh, I think I'm going to make a food and play an Emery. Food into Emery is intriguing. So the reason I'm doing... Can we kin it into Uro this turn? Yeah. We can do that next turn, too. Is that too poor? No, it's, it's the same kind of, like, random-ass stalling as what I chose, so... We need to draw into like Urza or Karn or, or one of one of the haymakers that we have that doesn't involve the graveyard. The reason this Emery line is like kind of attractive to me is uh, with the wrist and piece in play, they're like less likely to actually target and kill the Emery. And Emery's a one two, which means with the with the um, with the Shadow Spear, Emery is two power with lifelink. We're probably just gonna be forced to double block. I don't know about any cards, but it looks like they have Skewer or Bolt. Yeah, they have Skewer, so we have to double block here. Uh, shoot. No, wait, that puts us in the same spot. Yeah, so we go Kinnon into Uro this turn, but we're in really, really colossally, amazingly bad shape. Oh, a little late, my friend. No, we, we can't kin it into Uro here. Because the colors don't work out that way. They don't work like that. Kinnon can get... So Kinnon is played for green and blue here. And then we have red. And we can add blue, blue, or green. Can't we just Urza? Yeah, we can just Urza. Yeah. And then we have two mana. We had two geese last turn. But we didn't have two food last turn until I spent two, dude. We only had one food. Okay, so... Play the Shadow Spear. Yeah. But I can't equip the Shadow Spear. Pray to dodge Bolt. It, it's not Bolt, though. It's like every burn spell, right? The best final card they could have had in their hand was like another Swiss Spear, I guess. Probably just dead. Rift Bolt. Yep, just dead. Yeah, I mean, we just we just choked a little bit on mana. We put up a reasonable fight, though. I'm, I'm actually really impressed. Are you talking about the... What is it, the well, Roy? What, do you, what, what artifact are you talking about? Because there is a one-drop artifact that does that. Christine Talisman. Oh, no, 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 but there's like a one-drop artifact that does it. It's literally one mana, every upkeep you gain one, and then it has like three mana, sack it, draw a card. Uh, yeah, I can't keep that. Font of Fertility. Uh, it's Font of Something. Can I keep this in the dark? They have no companion. <sighs> yeah, I think I can.
Pristine Talisman synergizes with Karn for one more mana. Hard font. I think it's Font of Fortunes. It's from M19. We crush these decks. Okay. I'm going to take your word for it. I lost to Salt Irisa last night, so I don't feel super confident about it. But this could be... Okay, so this is Stoneblade. Hey, Mare Bear, you made it home. Oh, Fountain of Renewal is the card. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're going to need all the Stoneforge because they got Batter Skull there. Problem is, then we're not using this EE, but we, we didn't really want to use this EE anyway. All right, well, I'll see you around, Jiggy. I don't know if I agree that we eat these decks, but it's certainly possible. Probably should have waited until until I knew what was going on afterwards there, but whatever. Uh, so sorry, what I mean is, oh yeah, every time, man. Thank you for joining us. Um, I don't know if I'm going to hit a third land this turn, and if I do, I don't know if I'd rather play. I mean, obviously at this point I'd rather play play Royal Scions, I think, because it sets up a permanent that... Yeah, that's the reason we weren't supposed to fetch. It's going to be fine, maybe. Probably not. It does look like their land stalled, so... Maybe? Stop it. Ah. <laughs> Rats. Okay. Land. Astrolabe. Land. It's probably a land. Or an astrolabe. Okay. Quality land. But I can't play red and six this turn. Even with the skeleton turn. Oh, we stumbled. Might still be okay. They stumbled too. They have something like Teferi here, though. It's gonna suck. Oh man, new no, four mana. That's insurmountable. No, but seriously, this is really bad. Our strength in this matchup is being able to explode out on board and sort of utilize all of the broken mana things we've got going on. That is gonna get a very scary sword. Yep. Oh boy. And they have mana up to play something like Mana Leak this turn, so we might just be out of business here. This Engineer Explosives really looks like it should have been on two. Uh, obviously, there's no way we could have known that this sort of situation would come up. Probably Force of Negation or Mana Leak or any number of wonderfully horrible things. We still do get to play Emery here, but. Now they give us extra lands? Good. Thank goodness. I'm so glad. Oh, but they don't have the mana to put in the sword and equip it? Oh, of course they don't. Because the Stoneforge Mystics are off. They're just leaving up mana to, to wreck me. Well, I think the only thing worth doing here is Urza and hope that their counter is Force of Negation. It's unlikely. Was Archmage his turn? Yeah. Goddamn tempo decks. Tempo control, but still tempo.
Really? That's a very strange... Oh, I should have um, bobbled there. Just kind of tilted and not playing correctly. Force negation on the top. Yikes. I mean, in theory, that means I get to resolve Uro this turn. Ugh, I'm going to lose my Kinnon to the... What? What? You didn't equip the... They're attacking the Scions. What? I... What? <laughs> okay. Stay of execution. I'm not mad. They probably have another Ice Fang in their hand or something. I don't know. Okay, arrow. Okay, got an arrow. Probably have another path, but I will take it. Okay, now we're gonna plus. Goose. Goose seems okay. You know, Scarred Ren 6 is not really doing us any good here. <laughs> so Uro gained me 3, and then I lost all the 3. This person's playing Stoneblade. Who the hell plays Stoneblade? Brian, this you. Somewhere in the world, I have a wonderful friend named Brian Ching and plays the hell out of some stone blade. Why, why this turn? Why not on the last turn? I don't, are you, are you gonna attack the Scions? Are you attacking me? What, why? Why now? Okay, well, discard my Karn, because I know they have Force of Negation in their hand. Oh god, bounce my Uro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And kill her to Fairy with Goose. Which is, like, not exciting, but... Also recast the Uro, I guess. First strike, trample, flying, goose. Terrifying. This goose gonna F you up. Yonk, yonk. Yes, I mentioned the honking earlier. Uh, we don't have an astrolabe, so I have to be pretty careful. Shoot, there's like no way I'm gonna hit the hit the blue for this. No, I didn't. Am goose. When's the mox hitting the board? I think the next turn. Yeah, next turn. Oh shoot, playing the cannon means I lose the Karn. Okay, well. For reference, everybody, uh, anyone who's watching this VOD in the future, I'm super, super drained today, so i probably not going to play very well over the next three games, three matches, but Jiggy's deck is sweet, and I want to try to show it off for the best I can. Um, I think I want to play it again on Friday night, maybe. It's just so awesome. It's really, really fun. It's really cool. Um, we'll probably kick around a lot of the changes that we're looking at making, but I'm just not not in my full uh, full wellness right now. Yeah, I hope I get better soon too.
It's not um, not fun. It's a little thing, but it's just very, very debilitating right now. Okay. Tis hella crappy weather. Yeah, I heard the thunder. There's six cards in hand. <laughs> Let's that hope that somehow none of it interacts with my board. All right, here's my terrible Mox. Okay, so that resolved. Here's my terrible Astrolabe. Okay, so that resolved. All right, oh, sure. So, quick to Kinnon. 3-3 three, three lifelink. Kinnon bonus. 5-5 five, five first strike lifelink trample. Attack? You has another path? If yes, it means my arrow is going to be able to live. Really? Okay. Okay. I'll take it. Nice house. I think I'll take it. No, not that one. Terrifying mother. This boy be big. What? God bless it. And tap my team. So they're swinging for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Lit literal exactsies. And I can't. I can pay to crack my food though. So maybe they missed that. Or maybe they were thinking that I would. Bloop. My pie. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Pi, I'm just gonna do this. Hop, hop, hop. If you get eaten, it's your own fault. Another Astrolabe, huh? So Astrolabe is currently mana neutral with Kinnon in play, so let's go ahead and cast that. <laughs> More arrows. That was a Simpsons reference. Hum, hum, hum. <laughs> Maybe I could just say yes to the question, is that a Simpsons reference on almost anything that I've said, and she will likely be correct. Uro again? Maybe this time? This time with feeling. Seriously? Come on. Come on. Cut it out. Stop it. Okay. Okay. And I can't make the food now. But I can cast a row. Other times it's probably SpongeBob. That's true. That's factual is in fact true fact. All right, let's draw land. That's what I like to see, all right. So I did screw up, I should have a food in play. Otherwise we're okay. I like donuts and stepping on the beach, I do. Donuts, I like donuts. Hey, I know you. Do they have partially gelatinated non-dairy gum-based beverages? Yeah, call them shakes. Ha! You don't know what you're getting. Oh, 
God. All right. I'm, I, uh, I've had enough. What are you casting? Is it Uro? To pick up the cryptic command and then attack me and then untap all your stiff? Yeah. Just just bleeding a little clock from them, Roy. Just for you. On the plus side, our main deck is pretty well configured here, so hopefully we can use it to our advantage in game two and three. Yeah, our sideboard cards are looking pretty medium. Technically, I could board in Galvanic Blast, but I don't think it's actually better than most of what we're doing in this main deck. We don't have any way to recur it, unlike a lot of the other cards. I think I'll bring in one just for sort of funsies. Maybe two. Alright. Obviously it's like a weird thing to board out any number of Mox Tantalites because first of all it's not legendary and second of all you really want to have it in your opening hand if, if you want it at all, but uh, I still think that's where I want to be with it, so... That's what I'm doing. Yeah, this hand is so close, but it's not good enough because you can't cast this Renin Six. I don't want to. I want to take the same hand. That is much better. This is fantastic. Keep the hell out of that. Bottom the redundant Renin Six. We're good to go. I'm oiled up and ready to go. Uh, we're gonna play the Astrolabe on one. Goose or Astrolabe, we're playing Renin 6 on 2. No, I want, I want the Goose down first. Not because I'm going to do anything with it early, but because on turn 3, we're going to be able to play Kinnon, Astrolabe, and then we can sack for 4 mana. So if we draw an Urza, our turn 3 is going to be completely bonkers. Kinnon likes his elk friend and his other dino friend that he's standing on. Kinnon's got a chubby, chubby face. Chubby. Chubby face. And a mohawk? Yeah. You do have a mohawk. Uh, no, it's it's that super trendy haircut that uh, Autumn Burchette has. It's like the, the side shave, just the one side shave, I think. I mean, we can't see the other side of, of Kinnon's head properly, but I, I think it's probably the super trendy modern haircut. So they, they shocked in there. The most likely thing for them to have is Mana Leak. Or, um, Dark Mod. I don't know what a Dark Mod is, but... So... Modern haircut, okay. If they have the mana leak, they should they should whack this, which is a little unfortunate for us, but kind of good. Uh, 
It's a really unfortunate card draw. So I could use my food to cast Astrolabe Galvanic Blast. That's not worth doing, so we're just going to hang out. Hold on, the food plus the Astrolabe means I could put Urian in my hand in this on this turn. I think I do want to do that. Yeah, the goose makes food tokens. Not only does so the goose comes with a food token when you play it, and then you can make more food. The goose lays golden eggs. Okay, so I can pick up the Orion this turn. Next turn I have four, five, five mana. So I can play the Orion. The Astrolabe is mana neutral. So assuming that they give me the opening next turn, we just slam Orion and get a bunch of value. This kind of means they perpetually have to keep up mana to deal with the... <laughs> hurt yourself from laughing too hard again. Magic's great. The only tells you otherwise is selling something. You don't know that line yet. You, you will watch Princess Bride soon. You will be shown. Princess Bride is one of the best, one of the best movies of all time, and it's just, just so many wonderful cultural references. The Man in the Black Mask has a great one that's become much, much more relevant recently, where he's like, where someone's like, oh, I don't trust you wearing a mask. He's like, have you ever tried it? It's exceptionally comfortable. I think everyone in the future will be wearing them. Stone forms. Yep. Oh, baby, she's got it. Anyone curious? Yes. It was a Banana Rama, Rama reference. I'm not, uh, I'm not upset about it. All right. So I think... King's the Ice Fang, Kortl. Get out of here, you naughty little snake. So they've got one mana open here. It's a pretty good chance they've got Mystical Dispute rocking. So I, I don't think I'm trying to slam my Orion through that. But... I think we just go blast. Pshh. And attack for two. Okay, that's nice for us. Please play your Sword of Feast and Famine. Oh, come on. Just do it. Just do it. It sucks. Do it. Two mana open. Damn it. How am I ever going to be two mana? Wait, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Sorry. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, that's how I'm going to beat it. Okay, got it. I figured it out. Never mind, folks. We got this. Maybe Uro is probably just better here. Can I Uro this turn? Uh, no. So I think we're going to uh, Urion this turn and hopefully just completely blow out their attempt to counter it. We shall see. Uriah. Scraw! Who's that Pokemon? Yeah, so we gotta play three, which we will do. So, crack food, tap an Astrolabe, and okay. Yes, please. Okay. Resolves. Okay. Sky Noodle. One, two, three, four. V -v 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 value. Uh, and then we'll plus our random sex, pick up scalding turn, and we're in good shape. Not great shape, but good shape. Good enough good enough to be getting along with. Goose. Goose, goose, goose. 
Bank. Bonk. Emery. You're a little tardy to the party, but I'll take it. Because I think this turn we can Emery into Uro. Yeah, we definitely can. Kinnan is giving us boatloads of mana. Why, Kinnan? Bonder Prodigy. So they still got the Sword of Feast and Famine in their hand. We want to keep that in mind. And they get the Batter Skull. It's Batter Skull. So I have very little reason not to go to combat first. So I think I'm going to do that. Especially because there's a reasonable chance they kill something here. Gotta love the one mana kill of food. Oh, I forgot Snake was still alive. Oh, you're Ryan. Sky Noodle, no. You will make a beautiful Uro. No, Sky Noodle. I loved you. You are my brother! You were supposed to unite the forest, stop whatever. All right. Can I also Ren 6 to kill Stoneforge Mystic? I think I can. Oh, I'm going to run out of my colors, right? No, the Astrolabes fix everything, I think. Just, just like everyone else's deck. So if we go ping, play second Ren 6, we have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 mana. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we can play Escape Burrow and Emery. So we're good. Ran and sex. Keep that one. Kill that. Okay, so we want blue, blue, blue. Make green, green. Make green, green. Yeah, so that's everything I want there. So play the arrow. Did I just screw that up? Uh, I've got a prismatic vista so I can fix it. i put in the misty rain for Oh, we got a box hammer too. All right, we're, we're great. Everything's coming up, Millhouse. So we go blue. I think I still have to eat my food here. Unless Misty fixes this. I think it does. Yeah, I just need a green. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> For anyone watching this and thinking, man, I often have a hard time finishing clicking through my stuff on Magic the Gathering Online. Maybe don't play this deck. This, this may not be the deck for you. Has opponent conceded? Is that what happened here? Is that is that why I can't do anything? Yay! So, <laughs> uh, one of my wonderful subscribers here, Larynx Punchworthy, loves to donate for me to play these kind of decks. And I was talking to someone else about them, uh, about how we love to play these decks that have, quote, no win condition. And then you look at the deck and you're like, wait, 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 wait. You're playing Urza, and you're playing Uro, and you're telling me your deck has no win condition? It's like, well, no, my deck my deck has, like, technically it has win conditions, right? But, um, well, here's the thing. Uh, usually when I play them, my win condition is my opponent scooping to value. Like, usually they just get to a point where they're like, you know, no, I'm done. I can't, I can't watch any more of this. I'm out. See ya. <laughs> GG, go next. Can't, can't keep up. Uh, I'm going to be back in two seconds. As I mentioned, I'm a little under the weather, so I'm just uh, give me one second, and then we'll be into the next one.
Is there anything else I want to change here? I don't think so. <laughs> Eating opponent's cake. Yes, yes, yes we did. I think I'm happy with this. I think... I like all of these. Maybe another Galvanic Blast over like an Ancient Stirrings. Might end up being bad because we're gonna have a hard time hitting our land drops, but... That is, that is an A-plus opening hand. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Y'all ready for God? They printed red polymorph, which means polymorph could be yet another pioneer combo deck. Well, there already is. I mean, there already are people playing that in pioneer. So, um... Or, you know, not not on mass, but uh, Faith is Brewing, by the way, 100% uh, free, my favorite podcast. So if you want to check them out, uh, they're amazing. Uh, they did a week on Luca Coppercoat Outcast, and in Pioneer, they played uh, Luca plus Indomitable Creativity. So while it doesn't function like a polymorph effect, what it does do, or it func functions similar to a polymorph effect as long as all the creatures in your deck are zeros, which you can do with Dwarven Mine. Which obviously is not that good, but yeah, you're, you're. I mean, there is now Luca plus uh, the new Polymorph thing, or you could play um, the Polymorph thing and Indomitable Creativity. Well, like Indomitable Creativity and Luca function very similarly, right? All right, is this Ice Fang or is this uh, Mana Leak? Ether Gust. That's just rude. I think I'm going to top it because next turn I'm going to try to play Scions. No fetches makes it worth. Well, for sure. 110%. Um, they had uh, other token generators. I don't remember exactly what Dave's deck was like. If they play Teferi here, we're actually not that upset about it. Yeah. We can bounce our stuff, which is kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, Combo Goblins 2.0. Yeah. yeah. Combo Goblins is... They coming. Uh, we do want our mountain here. So hopefully Royal Scions can help us make our way to some relevant cards. And Teferi cannot bounce Royal Scions. So it's, they're nice to have here. And my opponent has put no pressure onto the battlefield. So actually, they may be incentivized to force a negation this. Yeah. All right. I'll take it. Which means our Urza has a clearer landing next turn. Not thrilled, but we could top deck Galvanic Blast to take down this Teferi. Yikes. Okay, that's that's good for them. Yeah. Galvanic Blast would be great. Emery is acceptable. Mystical Dispute, please. Okay, good. <laughs> Mill zero artifacts and two cannons. Yikes. Not what you want to see. Comboblins, yeah. I mean, I'll play some Comboblins. I'll play the new uh, Snoop combo deck. Snoop Gobble Gob. Explosives is an interesting one. So if I play it on zero, I can take out uh, the germ token. I'm going to ping Teferi first. Make sure that I keep Teferi off of um, the ability to um, 
words, words, words. <sighs> Keep Teferi off the ability to attack my uh, Urza that I'm about to play. Playing Urza will... Ah, I should not have done that. I should have saved that. Because if I play Urza and they counter the Urza, then... Yeah. So basically I've just locked myself into sitting here for the turn, I think. Which is not great. So I play Urza and they have a counter. We're just kind of up a creek, I guess. And but we've got the engineer explosives. If they counter it, it means they can't get the batter skull down this turn, but they're heavily disincentivized for playing the batter skull this turn now anyway. So I think we're just gonna sit. And Emery gives us the ability to replay the engineer explosives at a much better rate than they can reset their batter skull. So here comes one battery lad. Oh, they had the Feast and Famine in their hand. Brutal. Okay, well. They have to kill my Emery, though. They want to get too much out of this, so. Okay, let's see what happens. Yeah, they're attacking me. Can we set this EE to three? We can. We can. It's just a, it's just so much easier for them to counter it the more mana I have to spend on it, right? And the 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 harder we get hit if they do have a counter in terms of the sort of value proposition of the play. I'm not saying we we won't do that. I, I think we have to do it because the upside is so grotesque right now with the Teferi and the sword in play, and I have zero three drops. They're going to cryptic something? They're going to cryptic Emery. God bless it. That is such a good play if that's what they're going to do here. Although, I'm playing Urza this turn, and they can't force that. Oh. Okay. We can activate EE. We're doing that in a turn. And target E if they bounce Emery. It's their turn right now. <laughs> Thanks for playing, Roy. <laughs> Dude, I, I I I adore you. It's it's great. You're great. Don't even don't even trip, dog. Okay. Um <laughs> chat lethal so assuming that their card in hand is force of negation assuming they have that again um they can force my engineer explosives so the question is do i play urza first i think the answer is 10 out of 10 yes um we play urza first one two three four and then we have one two um three to play the ee but Oh, and then, the, yeah, 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 yeah. And then the EE and the Construct to sack it. So if I've done all of my math correctly, we should be good on this play. I think I have to get a blue source. I don't have to get a blue source, but um, the Astrolabe is going to be blue, red, green. Yeah, okay. This, this should work fine. It seems like they've f 6 here. I can't tell. Yeah, they have. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna take them apart here, unfortunately for them. Urza. High Lord Artificer. We do lose the Emery there, so that was something that I did not notice. Missed I missed the uh, sort of unintended um, collateral damage on on Emery there. They hit four mana. It's obviously worth it, but I just missed it. Shicks. Rent six. Rancix. 
please let this be cryptic counter Ren six bounce your Urza. For some reason, I'm just sitting here being like, somehow that's going to be their play. It's just incredibly illogical. But okay, so they still have the batter skull in their hand, which is not great for me. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I can't Uriah this turn. Uh, I think I'm just going to spin Urza. Which means I should not have played the land that I did. Huh? Where did I... I probably... Whatever. Okay. We've got much to do and little time to do it in, so... Goose! Kyonk, kyonk! I love that little goose. Plus, he gives me mana. I love mana. The mana, mana. Do, 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 do. I got my mana. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Roy with the chat lethal. Love it. Batter skull. Womp womp. Batter skull. Lisa needs braces. Batter skull. So if they attack us, we're going to take the four here. I'm not worried about dying anytime soon. If they attack my Renin Six, uh, I think I just let Renin Six go down. I don't really need more lands. In theory, I could get Renin Six up to seven, get the ultimate. If I find a Galvanic Blast, we get to start doing that. But it's not coming soon. What is this? Tabal creatures draw. Yep. All right. So we're probably losing Ren and Six here, but the fact that they entirely tap down for that is pretty good for us because the amount of advantage we can put out in a single turn is is pretty gross. Like, and had they just attacked without the cryptic, I was pretty willing to make that trade anyway because my construct's not big enough. So that is an insane top deck. Uh, before I do anything else, let's go ahead and fetch. Sure. Grab a tap. No. Uh, we're gonna make make a food. Yeah. Make a food. Spin my Urza. Ooh, new Urza. That is one of the best possible hits. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so good! Triggers. Play my Emery. Lurker of the Lock. And then uh, attack for five, I guess. So, really want to avoid them picking up uh, Supreme Verdict. Not that we can do anything about it. What? Really? Wow. That is... Oh, they must have the Verdict. They must have the Verdict and they were waiting for me to overextend. God, I hope not. I just think we weren't really in a position to... Oh, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. Don't do it, don't do it. No, no! Ah! We haven't hit a single Uro, no. Oh, no, no, no. Well, that's insane. Okay, so all of their lands are shut down right now. Uh, I think I'm supposed to get Salvage Titan here and just put it into play. Oh, I wish I knew what I was to do here. Um, let's just get Liquid Milk Coat and cast it while they're tapped down. Pretty sure this Prismatic Vista is dead, so I'm just going to pass the turn here. Uh, during their upkeep, I'm going to shut off one of their blue. We're probably just losing this match to Clock at this point, but... Do you know what's considered a functional reprint? For example, would printing Underground Sea with the Snow Super type count? I, I believe so, yes. So 
So Searing Spear to Lightning Strike, clearly a functional re reprint. Um, I think adding a super type, I mean, especially in the case of Snow, right? You're literally just making that card better. Since you have been so helpful to point out, um, still have our comrade to help end this game. You are not wrong. So, all right. We're going to turn on our lands into an artifact. They can bounce my Karn now. Okay. Wait, no, we'll just pluck the Karn on it. I don't know why they're letting me do this. The super type legendary changed things. Yes. Yes, it would. 10 out of 10. That would absolutely change things. I don't think they'll do it, but I, I... Snow super type with Into the North. Exactly. Like, really, you've all you've done is made the card better, right? Are they crypt digging my Trinket Mage? But then what is the other mode? And Karn? Sure. I like free wishes. Unless they've got the Force of Negation, but that's fine. Wow. What a draw. <sighs> so that's basically our last Karn. Jesus. And they get to reset a Cryptic. You know, we're never we're just never gonna be able to win on clock. This this deck is so so hard on clock. Just everything takes forever in the Urza deck, and we don't again, we don't have any solid win conditions, so it's really hard to please resolve. I know. Okay, good. Oh, come really? Well, okay. All right. Oh, hey, Jiggy. We're still in a match against Snowblade that took a million billion years, and we're not going to be able to win because they just barely eked out the amount of clock. Um, we haven't hit a single Uro. Probably should have named something different with the Pitting Needle. I don't care. I don't have enough time to figure it out. I know their hand is Cryptic Command Batter Skull, which is why they're not playing the Batter Skull, because they know if they tap down right now, they could just lose. So basically, they're banking on me losing on clock once I try to win. And they've got an Archmage's Charm now, too. Uh, we just can't beat them. They're on freaking five mana, but their their answers have been just so efficient that we can't win this from this point. So deck dies to clock again. There's a Karn here, but it's not it's not viable. I mean, yeah. Sorry, Jiggy. I'm I'm making this deck look bad. Yeah. Mox Tantalite's been good in some games, Jason. Mm hmm. J Jiggy, you were here for it. No way, it's hard. I, I know, but I, I just wish that I was like, I don't know. I feel like if I was one of those streamers who was uh, more focused on just playing the game and less about talking about why I was making my decisions, then I, I would be. I'd be doing better here, but I just feel like that would be disingenuous to to what I do here and why and, and, and how. And I don't need to win these games. They're not really... Come on, Cryptic. Yeah, 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 I know. Okay. Yeah. That's your brew round card? Cryptic lock gets old? Disagree. I have never I am never sick of cryptic lock. I love cryptic lock. Just 
Just F6 until he dies to mill. Uh, it's not really viable. Sometimes you eat the bar. Sometimes the bar eats you. You gotta love Moto hitting you with the um actually on your attack step with your two O2s. Good lord. They hit one of their arrows. We are 43 cards deep in our deck. We hit zero arrows. Zero. Yeah. Can't can't win them all. I mean, we're gaining on clock somehow. I don't know how that happened. All gas from here. It That would make me lose the game more than anything else. The clock is the problem. I'm assuming it'll take them longer to counter this than... Damn it! No, I don't. That's not what I wanted. There we go. Dinged him for one. I booped him on the nose. Just remove all stops. It, there's no... I'm not bothering with that crap. I literally should just concede the game now. But I'm not going to. I'm going to watch my, watch my meager clock tick out. Removing all stops is just going to make everything inconvenient for me when I go into my next match. Ah, a threat! Are they actually going to attack something? No, of course not. Good thing I didn't save targets. Yeah, I'm, I'm done here. This is silliness. We, I think we could have won that game, but... You just... You just, you're not allowed to play Magic with these chess clocks sometimes. And it's fine. Like, that's part of playing Moto. And our opponent did it better than us. The Urza decks are notorious for this. So, what are your thoughts on how MTGO manage, manages match time? I think it's completely reasonable. I think it's totally fine. It just makes it harder for a streamer like me sometimes. Hand is really bad. It's playable, but we're on the draw in the dark. I think we can do better. This is much better. This is a really hard throwback. I mean, it's not even luck, right? It's it's more... My opponent's playing a deck that is much more click conservative than we are. Um, for that one, Pensewer... Uh, <sighs> Oh, well, okay, maybe. Um, yeah, I'm not... Just keep playing, man. Um, play more challenges. Play some preliminaries, because they're, uh, you know, slightly lower stakes. They tend to be slightly less competitive. Um, the only way you're going to get better at doing it is is do it. All right, hopefully they're not on the um, mutagenic growth build. Um You'll find level up moments in the weirdest places. So, okay. So if I get steam vents into basic forest, that's perfect. All right, bye, Jig. It's gonna take each player a different amount of time to get to their next level, and they're not all gonna look the same. So, just just keep hacking away at it. And you'll you'll figure it out. Um, I would say if you're going into competitive events, play play a deck you enjoy, but also play something that you think you can play reasonably quickly. 
um, if time is going to be a concern, and play something that's reasonably linear if... No! Damn it! Roy, it's back! God! Are we just dead? I hope so. Yeah, of course. Of course. Why is it back? Why is it back? It's so bad. Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad, except when it's completely broken. Stupid Phyrexian mana. All right. Um, are any of those cards better than... Oh, we, no, we definitely want the Pithy Needle. My bad. Shadow Spear is fine for the trample on tokens and such. It's obviously not great, but I think I still keep it. Well, we got multiple blockers. In fact, I'll never see it coming. Been play played in fact twice tonight, so they are out in force. I did not know what happened, but because they didn't do particularly well in any of the challenges, I didn't think. Is it super cheap? It is, but that's not normally such a limiting factor. Yeah. Um, also, as far as I've heard from other players who are smarter about these things, Pensur, that um, the Urza decks... <laughs> the Urza decks are, um, tend to be soft to the hyperlinear combo decks just a little bit. Just because their interaction tends to be a little bit clunky. The interaction in the Urza deck is built for other mid-range and control decks more than it is for the hyper-aggressive decks. Yeah, this is an Urza deck that's basically removed most of the control elements in order to do these wild Kinnon things. Yeah, not, yeah, not having Force of Negation makes the Urza decks really, really soft to some of the, um, some of the unfair decks. Okay. Uh, can I die by taking this? No. Well, unless they've... No, they've, they've literally got two cards in hand. <laughs> That's a, that is one of my favorite quotes. I was playing a Loss and Zandy deck. That that was that was a good day. All right, so we're playing Urza this turn, and then things get really great. It's also a great draw. Okay, so I can leave the Astrolabe untapped, which I can. That means I have access to... Okay. So I should play the second Astrolabe. They're mana neutral once Urza's in play, but they're not mana neutral yet, so no, I can't do that. Urza. Okay. Forgot that was a thing that they could do. I haven't seen Infect do that in a while. Okay. Interaction. Yikes. No, there was. Um, if I play the other Astrolabe, I can't cast Urza. 
Oh no, Kinnon pluses the mana without the yeah, 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 yeah. I screwed up. I screwed up. Alright. So the most they can give the Glistener Elf is plus four plus four. So I can take this. Three. Yeah, we'd go to nine. But they're down to one card in hand, so hopefully we're okay. Yeah, I, I screwed up. Okay, that's a great draw for us to see. Yeah. I, I thought about it correctly at the beginning of the turn where I was like, okay, so each Astrolabe is mana neutral. Cause they, but I forgot it was because they're adding two. So this turn I am playing Emery. I am making a food and blasting one of these elves. But I'll make the food and blast the elf when I go to blocks. If they Pendlehaven an elf, we'll blast it. Can I resolve this astrolabe, please? Please. I would like, I would like my card. Thank you. That is a really good pickup. Makes things a little bit easier. Um, so we've got five. Karn doesn't do anything here, right? Karn does something once I have Karn and then a full turn. Oh, Karn gets engineered explosives, which although bad for me, is very bad for them. Um, so all I need to do is make it through a turn. So why not play the Karn, blast one of their creatures. Yeah. What? So I play Karn, Blast Creature, and I can get Walking Ballista and just wreck them next turn. Is that better than Emery make a food and blast? No, probably not. Probably not. All right. Perfect. Cool. I think this is going to be okay. This way we get to assign two blockers. Oh, perfect. Oko and Moxon and shit. A version of this deck? Oh, I don't know about that for Legacy. <laughs> Legacy got Force of Will. Okay, so blast that. So they can attack with a 3-4? I think they just conceded? They conceded, okay. Yay! Roy, we did it! We deployed multiple blockers against Infect. It's all you gotta do. It's all you gotta do. Okay. Mystical Dispute. They're playing Mystical Dispute. Good lord. Got him. We got one more game to do, so. Uh, this is probably as good as it gets. Turn one EE, -E, turn two Ren and Six. Like, get them. Oh, we gonna get them. Come on now. It's time to get. What is that doing in there? What is it? What, what are you playing? I'm confused and aroused. I, I in, the, in the words of the great Kiff Croker, <laughs> really don't like bopping. In fact, no kidding. You also don't like um, mutagenic growth. So unless you unless you came around on it or something. Burn up pump spell. <coughs> 
I agree that some metas exist where it could be good. Would you also say that you haven't seen any of them? Good man. Meeting every meta exactly. Hello. Hello. Friendo. I activated my Ren six. My Ren six has. No, that's a world sounds. Good lord. There we go. My Ren 6 has this text right here. It's so good. Why is it so good? It's so freaking good. All right, they could kill me here, right? Yeah, they can kill me here. They have the god draw. <sighs> yeah, they could do it. Come on, activate Pendle Haven for its second ability. Don't add mana. Don't add mana. Stop it. Whew. All right, they're probably attacking my random six down. Are they attacking me for three? Interesting. Well, okay. Okie dokie. Doopity doopity. Charge. Can you feel it, opponent? The walls closing in. It won't be long now. This engineered explosive spells your doom. All right, what do you got? Because I got a shock. Nature's greatest pr uh, predator. Lightning. <laughs> Activates Nexus. Ooh, ooh. Yikes. Ah, uh, clever girl. Uh, so if I shock this in response, I end up taking more damage. So we're just going to take five. Okay. This is bad. Oh, no! They had the, they had the nuts. Uh, I should have shot, or I would have taken six instead of seven. Seven's lethal. Ah! Somewhere Roy is telling me that they have a way to kill me because they have a million cards in hand. So, and by a million, I mean two. Well, that was a phenomenal uh, creature list draw from Infect. Jeez, we are on the road to a sad record. We can we can scoop at a two three. I went to the autonomous zone today. It was pretty cool. We're one three, Roy. And you can see it on screen now. A lot of close ones. Like burn was close. The control matchup was close. The infect matchup was close. Like, is it? It's it's been reasonable, but. So I can't cast these astrolabes. We're against Luris. Whoa. We have we have truly fallen. Alright, we're against Luris. Do I pithing needle in the dark? 
So that I can cast a turn to Emery. So I can, no, I'm just supposed to mulligan this hand. If one of those was a snow land, it was going to be... That was a great hand, but I can't keep it as it was. This is much better anyway, so... Keep this one. Opponent mold six as well, which makes it slightly more likely in my mind that they're on Burton, um, which means our first two turns are going to be playing Astrolabes and a tapped uh, Steam Vents, maybe. So we could bobble them for information on what they're playing. But since we've already gotten through turn one, it's not really uh, relevant. Ah, I was supposed to hit them on the upkeep. Uh, it's not really relevant. Shoot. Bobble. Oh, is it Jund? Could be Jund. Oh, they bobble themselves. Interesting. So, looking looking for the long game, and they left it. So it's probably what do you what do you what do you need, opponent? What are you looking for? Land. Okay. Okay, we're looking for land. That's a draw. I'm gonna get blue here. So we have the bobble in there, so we're gonna play Astrolabe into Emery. It's a great pickup. So as long as we don't get so, there's a chance we get thought seized. Oh, no. All right. As long as they're not on, like, the Mardu or Black Red Luris deck of yore, we're going to be okay here. Okay, good. Not good. Good. So, while well, playing Ren and Six this turn would guarantee we can Uro next turn, I think I'm just going to play the Uro. Because there's a reasonable chance we hit a land or mana source in the next two. We just really don't want to hit. They conceded to me casting the Uro on the front side. What? I, I guess... I guess the Luris burn deck is way worse against that kind of thing than the actual burn decks are. The classic burn deck. But seemed perhaps a little premature. But I understand the feeling. I hear it happens to every guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some, sometimes. Nothing, nothing to be ashamed about. Okay, this hand is not great, but it gets great fast, so. We're going to play out everything uh, as early as we can, just because they are an Eidolon deck. We already saw the Eidolon. I guess I could engineer explosives on one here, but since I'm playing Gilded Goose and the Goose is likely to die... Um, I'm okay sort of sacking the goose for some life gain at some point soon and then uh, playing EE and sacking it on turn 3 if we have to 
Eidolon on top. Well, that's a yikes. Don't idle on me, friendo. So, they idle on. We're gonna. Yeah. I guess I could have blocked there. <sighs> That's a draw. Alright. Well, here's where we find out if they play something like Smash the Smithereens and we're just toast. I think I'd rather have the goose right now. A braid. God bless it. Come on. Ah. <laughs> Kept the right hand, made the right play. Nothing matters. <sighs> I could draw an arrow. Okay. All right. Uh, I mean, we d we did the thing. So, I can add mana with Mox Amber here while Uro's in play. But it's not going to let me cast the Uro. The only thing that matters is going to be casting this Uro. So if somehow we survive the next turn here, we just cast the Uro, take another two though. So there's almost no chance we make it out of this. But they are likely to have a higher uh, density of lands in this deck. They are likely to have uh, more permanence, more, I don't know. They're just less likely to have the kill here than uh, the normal burn deck would. Yeah, but that's it. All right. Doesn't matter. So we're taking seven. We're going to uh, two with just this. And casting arrow will kill us, even if we can get to it. And we have a fetch land that we need to use for that. So going to game three here. All right. Uh, seems good. Seems good. A braid, smashed smithereens. These these cards make it really, really hard to, for our interaction to be to be relevant in the way we want it to be. But we soldier on. Oh, man. Can't keep that one. Can keep this one, but it's kind of awkward. Getting... Um, breeding pool. We'll do that on turn two. I'm going to throw back the Scions and hope that we get to that Urza. I don't need to play this goose on one, and I'd rather get the breeding pool and have good mana on turn two here. So hopefully they play Goblin Guide, but it wasn't as common in the Luris burn decks. Okay, good. Give me that land, friend. We're gonna have to shuffle that away. <clears throat> Just fine. Huh, with all the decks I played tonight, I wonder if my green-red lands deck is probably better positioned than a lot of the stuff we were playing. Should take that out for a spin tomorrow. 
So it seems like we ran into a lot of low CMC. We ran into multiple infect decks and multiple burn decks. So we'll kill the Swiss Spear here in response. Swiss Spear is pretty likely to generate more damage than Goblin Guide overall. Damn it. Really could have used the land draw there. I have to sack my food to play Kinnon. As the colors didn't come together here. Which I think I'm gonna do, but I'm really not happy about it. I think as long as we're here, I think we're gonna play Pithy Needle and name Sunbaked Canyon. To shut off their ability to draw a card with it. Could trade Kinnon with Goblin Guide, but that I just need this Goblin Guide to draw me a land or two would be great. Obviously, we are a very low land count deck, so there's one. I think I'm taking the two here. It's just I'm very unlikely to die, and having Kinnon on board with the Guilty Goose is really good. Okay, that's bad. We get this Urza next turn. And Goose can lay an egg for us. I think we just gotta sit here. Uh, we'll definitely block with they. They suspended two rift bolts. I totally missed it. Good lord, are we dead? <sighs> wow. Yikes. Yeah, the, the two land draws from Burn are so hard to beat. Good lord. Yeah, they think we have counter magic, which is fair, but this deck is not running any kind of counter magic, so. I, I can't imagine any possible hand that they have right now that we get to survive, but... We're going to stick in for a little bit longer. Leaving open with blue mana. Could be Spell Snare. Yeah. Okay. So. <sighs> quality disappointing end. For a uh, big dirtily mid-range deck. So it really felt like we had the tools to get really close. All the time here. Like these, these were all close matches. Um, so. I think... If we actually strip out the nonsense out of this deck, and then probably the stirrings, because we'll probably be higher on land count, and then probably the scions, because I think they're not great here. Uh, it could go down to one if, uh, if we absolutely wanted to keep it. I think there's definitely something here. Um, so I'm probably going to come back with this later this week uh, maybe Friday night and work from this shell I think salvage Titan is probably hot nonsense that's just it's just not a constructed playable card I don't think no offense to jiggy wiggy for including it it's super super neat um, it's just not it's not good enough it's uh, it does it does a very neat thing that you don't need to do at all um, so yeah, I'm not sure where I'm going to go with this, but it's certainly interesting. And we have a lot of slots to play around with, which is kind of exciting. 
So uh, that is it for me tonight. Thank you, everybody, for hanging on out. Uh, I'm going to have this all posted to YouTube as usual. So check it on out there. Uh, take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones. And uh, I hope to be back tomorrow, and I hope to be back to more of my usual self. Uh, I hope the drop in energy and comfort on my end was not overly inconvenient to you, the watcher, and uh, it wasn't effective on my on my performance here. And um, just wanted to get some of these guys played out because there's just a lot of decks that I want to record, and they're all awesome. And uh, it's hard to take a night off when I know that I could be able to play. Um, even though it's kind of uncomfortable. Thanks, Spencer. Anyway, uh, thank you guys so much, and have yourself...